In this video, I'm going to be showing how to convert binary numbers represented in 2's complement to decimal. I'm going to show two slightly different methods for doing this and go through a few examples showing the two methods. To start off, I'm just going to go over the steps of the two different methods. The uh, first method is the first one that I learned, and the second one is one I learned a little bit more recently and is a little bit shorter. You can see that method 1 has 5 steps, method 2 only has 2 steps but I'm just going to walk through the steps here and then we'll kind of see how they get used as we go through the examples. Starting off with method one. Step one, determine sign from the most significant bit and we'll see that a bit of one means that the number is negative. Step two, if negative flip all the bits and add one ignoring overflow. Step three, assign powers of two to each bit. Step four, sum powers of two where the bit is one and step five, add negative sign if required. So that's method one. Method two is quicker, only two steps. So step one is assign powers of two to each bit, making the most significant bit negative. And then step two is sum powers of two where bit is one. So obviously method two is a lot shorter than method one, but we'll kind of see what it's like going through both of those as we go through these examples. The uh, method one and method two here are just names I came up with. They don't really mean anything. It's kind of just the order in which I learned the two methods. So that's what I'm calling them and that's what we'll call them in this video. Before we get into the examples, I just wanted to go over a few powers of two. So I copied a bunch of them onto this page. We've got two to the zero is one, two to the one is two, two to the two is four, two to the three is eight, and so on and so forth. I've only got the first 16 powers of two copied onto this page, but obviously you can calculate any more that you want. And honestly, if somebody asks you to convert a binary number into decimal that has more than 16 bits, that's kind of a, a crazy ask and you'd probably just use a computer or a calculator to do that. But I figured it'd be good just to see these, have these. Um, I'll pull them up again at the end if you want to reference them or save it in your notes. But now we can get into the examples. And we'll start with method one, and this is the first example. And the example says convert from two's complement to decimal and then gives us the number 0110111110. And to make things easier, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the steps for method one. And I've got them right here in the top right corner so we can reference and look at them as we go along. So before we get into any of the steps, I'm gonna go ahead and take this number and write the bits out a little more spaced out so I'll have more room to work. So zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero. And this will just give us a little bit more room. And now we can get into the steps. Step one, determine sign from the most significant bit and one is negative. So let's have a look at our most significant bit. In this case, it's zero. It's the one all the way to the left. And if one is negative, that means that zero must be positive. So we know we are working with a positive number here. Then we can move on to step two. If negative, flip all bits and add one, ignoring overflow. And we just said that this is a positive number, so we can go ahead and just skip step two because it's not negative. Step three, assign powers of two to each bit. For this one, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through each bit and assign increasing powers of two. So starting from the left, we'll do two to the zero, two to the one, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, and two to the seventh. So that's step three. Moving on to step four, sum powers of two where the bit is one. So let's pick out all the ones where the bit is one. So that would be this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, and this one. So now we can just go ahead and sum those powers of two. So we'll have two to the sixth, plus two to the fifth, plus two to the third, plus two squared, plus two to the first power. So you might know some of these off the top of your head, or you can go back and reference that sheet with powers of two that I showed earlier, but these end up being 64 plus 32 plus eight plus four plus two. And when we add those all together, we get 110, and this of course is a decimal number. And then we move on to step five, the last step, add negative sign if required. For this one, we looked at that first bit and we said it was a zero, which means that it's not a negative number. 
So in that case, we don't need to add a negative sign, and this is just our final answer. We skip step five, and we're done with the first example. Moving on to the next example, this is example two. We're still doing method one. So it's the same kind of problem, just converting two's complement to decimal, the whole point of this video. And in this case, our number is one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. And I just wrote these out again, spaced out, just to give us more room, just like in the last problem. And we'll just go through the steps again. Step one, determine sign from the most significant bit where one is negative. Once again, most significant bit is the one all the way to the left, and this time we have a one, so that means we're working with a negative number here. That means when we go to the step two, if negative, flip all bits and add one ignoring overflow. So let's go ahead and do that. First we'll flip all of our bits, so every one becomes a zero and every zero becomes a one. So zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero and now we add one ignoring overflow. So I'll just do that off to the side here, well, just so it's out of the way. So we've got zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, plus one. And this is a, a really addition here. We don't have any carries. So it's just going to be zero plus one is one, zero, one, one, all these other numbers just drop down, zero, zero, one, zero. And I'm just going to note here that where it says ignoring overflow, that just means that if we had a carry out from the eighth bit here into the ninth bit, we wouldn't consider that as part of our final answer. We would just drop it and keep whatever our eight bits are here. But that kind of case doesn't come up very often. Let's go ahead and write that out over here. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. So that was step two. Um, obviously that goes a little bit faster if you don't take the time to write it all out, but I figured I'd just show how all of that's working in this video just so you can get an idea if you're less familiar with binary numbers. And now we can move on to step three. Once again, we're gonna assign powers of two to each bit. So I'll write those out. Two to the zero, two to the one, two squared, two third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, and two to the seventh. And now we can move on to step four. Some powers of two where the bit is one, so let's pick those out again. We've got one here, two ones here, and a one here as the least significant bit. So we're left with two to the sixth, plus two to the third, plus two squared, plus two to the zeroth power, and that ends up being just 64 plus eight plus four plus one, which is 77. And now we'll move on to step five, which we skipped on example one because it wasn't a negative number, it was a positive number. But for this one, since our most significant bit was a one, we knew it was negative, so in that case, we need to add a negative sign onto this number, so we get negative 77. And that's all our steps, so this is our final answer in decimal. Now we'll move on to our third and final example using method one. Once again, just converting from two's complement to decimal, and this time we have the number one one zero zero one zero zero zero. So we'll just follow our steps like we've been doing and see what this binary number is in decimal. Step one, determine the sign from the most significant bit. Looking at our most significant bit here, it's a one, so that means that we have a negative number, so we'll just keep that in mind. Moving on to step two, if negative, flip all the bits and add one, ignoring overflow. So let's go ahead and flip our bits. So we have zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. And once again, I'll just off to the side here, add that one. So I'll copy what I just wrote, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 plus one. And this time we'll have a, a bit more carries. You'll see a little bit more how the uh, addition and binary here can get just a little bit more complex, but still pretty simple. So one plus one is two, obviously that doesn't fit here. So we'll add zero and carry the one to the next one. One plus one is two again. So I'll just put a zero here and carry the one. One plus one is two again another zero, carry the one, and then finally we got one plus zero is one, that fits, and then the rest just drops down. 
one one zero zero. So this is our number with all the bits flipped and adding one. So I'll go ahead and write that here zero zero one 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 zero 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 and we can move on to step three which is assigning powers of two so I'll go ahead and copy these in here I think I'll, I'll skip ahead to after I copy these in just to save time so here are all of our powers of two and we can move on to step four some powers of two where the bit is one so I'll identify the one bits and it looks like we just have these three here are all of our ones and we'll just add those together so for this one, I'm going to skip copying those again, and I'm just gonna write two to the fifth is 32, plus two to the fourth is 16, plus two to the third is eight. And all of those added together is 56. And all that's left is step five, add negative sign if required. Once again, in step one, we saw that the most significant bit was a one, telling us it's a negative number. So that means all we have to do is add a negative under this answer we got here we've got negative 56 and that is our final answer for example 3 okay now let's see some problems using method 2 once again I'll copy the steps right here in the top right corner so that way we can reference them as we go through these problems and let's just get started with the first example which of course is converting from 2's complement to decimal and in this case our number is 0 1 1 0 one 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 zero and you might notice that this example one is the same as example one that we did with method one and that's just so we can do the two methods and see that they give the same results so these are actually going to be the same three examples we're just going to solve them using method two instead of method one so for method two we'll start off step one assign powers of two for each bit making the most significant bit negative this will be kind of similar to what we did before. The only difference is we're adding that negative sign onto the power of two associated with the most significant bit. So let's see that. So we'll have two to the zero, two to the one, two squared, two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, and two to the seventh. And like I said, we needed a negative sign on the power of two assigned to the most significant bit. So just put a negative sign right there. And that's it for step one. On to step two, some powers of two where the bit is one. So once again, we'll just pick out our one bit. So it looks like we have those two there, these three here, and we'll sum those together. Two to the sixth plus two to the fifth plus two to the third plus two squared plus two to the first power, which ends up being 64 plus 32 plus eight plus four plus two, add those all together and we get 110. And those are all the steps that we have for method two. So this must be our answer. And we can see that that matches our answer we got when we solved the same problem with method one. Now moving on to our second example, and just like when we solved it the first time, we've got one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one one and we'll start off with step one assign powers of two to each bit making the most significant bit negative so we should be getting pretty good at this by now so we've got two to the zero two to the one two squared two to the third two to the fourth two to the fifth two to the sixth and two to the seventh and once again we need to make the power of two associated with the most significant bit negative so we'll just throw a negative sign right there and we'll go ahead to step two and sum the powers of two where the bit is one. So let's pick those out. We've got a one here, we've got two ones here, and we've got two ones at the end. So that's going to be negative two to the seventh, making sure to keep that negative sign, plus two to the fifth, plus two to the fourth, plus two to the first, plus two to the zero. And this is going to be negative 128 plus 32 plus 16 plus 2 plus 1 and add that all together and we get negative 77. That's the end of step 2 which is our last step for method 2 and this is our answer and once again we match what we got when we solved this problem with method 1. Now we'll move on to the third and final example here solving it with method 2. We've got 1 1 0 0 
one, zero, zero, zero. Now let's go through our two steps. Step one, assign powers of two. So real quick, we'll write those in here. Two to the zero, two to the one, two squared, two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, and two to the seventh, making sure we put a negative sign on that most significant one. And we'll move on to step two, where we sum the powers of two, where our bit is one. So let's pick out our ones. We've got two ones here and a one here, and that's it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and write out the expanded versions of these. So negative two to the seventh is negative 128, plus two to the sixth is 64, plus two to the third is eight. Add those all together and we get negative 56, which is our final answer, which matches what we got when we solved this with the first method. You can see that method two obviously is a lot quicker. It only has two steps, but I figured I'd go over method one because it was what I was taught in school and I think it might still be useful for some people. But obviously method two tends to be a little bit quicker, a little bit easier in my opinion, and I figured I would show it here. So to wrap things up, I figured what I'd do is I'd just copy our two methods and our powers of two onto the final sheet here so anyone can uh, take a screenshot or copy this into their notes if they want to reference it later. But of course, we've got our method one with the five steps, method two with the two steps, and the first 16 powers of two down here. So feel free to pause the video, take a screenshot, copy this to your notes, whatever you want here. And I hope this video helped some of you be a little more confident when converting from two's complement to decimal.